Hello, it's six o'clock and it's Boozy Tuesday. Hi, <laughs> so happy to have you join me. Hi, Guy. Hi, Haley. Um, I'm here tonight because tomorrow is the beginning of really this wonderful big Holy Week and it's Passover tomorrow. And uh, hi, Diana. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I thought it'd be great to maybe show a couple of wines that would be great for Passover and your Cyber Seder. Uh, everybody's going to be doing their Zoom, right? Making your grandmother's recipes and saying the Haggadah over the uh, the Zoom conference. I think it's it's wonderful. I mean, this is really what it's all about. It's about just connecting and being with the ones that you love and, and sharing in your faith and some fantastic wines to go with those very traditional foods that are going to be served uh, at your Passover meal. So I will get started. I'm going to show you the first one, a uh, nice white wine that, um, thank you, hi Amy. <laughs> this wine is from Israel and uh, it's from the Galilee region of Israel, which is in the northern part of Israel, just below Lebanon. And um, this is an Italian man, uh, Leonardo Recanati. He, he went there in 2000 and um, uh, partnered with one of the Israeli winemakers there. And they built this beautiful vineyard where they're making sustainably farmed and kosher wines. Uh, in that area, they've got um, you, I would love for you to go onto their website. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> I would love for you to go onto their website and see um, Ray Canati and see all the different wines that they're making. They're even bringing back, you know, in this region, you think about Israel and the history, they've been making wines there for thousands of years, right? They have wine presses that are 2,000 years old. So this is a very, very deep rooted in the culture and the history of the area. Um, at Rekanati, they even are bringing back some of the old uh, ancient grapes that were were made into wines 2,000 years ago. I, I find that stuff fascinating. I just, I like the history of all of this. The one I'm showing here is just their Chardonnay. Now they have a bit of a um, nice uh, clay limestone feel to their soil there. So just like when I've shown you um, Chardonnays from, say, Burgundy, that's also a very limestone-rich kind of a, play, uh, a, a soil. Um, it comes out with a, a nice, um, appley, bright mineral flavor for their Chardonnay. Probably not so overly oaked that you know we get in the California Chardonnays, but um, from Galilee, Israel nice color it's not too dark yellow you know sometimes the the california ones really have that golden golden yellow hue this is more pale put it in the sunlight here this is a really nice oh i really smell like a nice melon with this one mm. oh yeah it's not very oaky um it has a very nice dry quality to it and um, yeah, more melony. I, I really, this will go great with gefilte fish, which I happen to love. I really do like gefilte fish with a little horseradish on it. I really like that. Um, this would be fantastic. So this is a great way to start off your cyber seder with all of your, with all of your loved ones. Again, um, I'll show all the wines again. I'll post them afterwards, but this Rik Hanati uh, vineyard to look it up online really cool story really interesting wines just a beautiful area of our world and you don't normally think of um, wines coming from israel but you know ancient ancient wines beautiful stuff so the next wine i'm going to show you uh, for your seder something that'll go beautifully with your brisket which is another thing i love i love a good brisket um i'm going to show you a wine from bordeaux now the French wines, I know, are can be very confusing, right? And you think of all the, the regions and areas uh, of France and now Bordeaux, that's like 
the most romantic, most famous red wines probably in the world are the Bordeaux red wines. There's something about Bordeaux that I'm going to tell you that will help you decipher, you know, and you'll, you'll get the, it'll be just a good little piece of information for you. All right. Bordeaux is divided into two banks. There's the river down the middle, there's the left bank and the right bank. Now, the big difference between the Bordeaux wines and the left bank and the right bank, the left bank, they're predominantly Cabernet based. And on the right bank, they're predominantly Merlot based. So that is confusing, right? They're both Bordeaux, but they're completely different wines with completely different styles and blends of grapes. So, and they're gonna be uh, very, very different. Now the left bank, that is the granddaddy of Bordeaux wines. That's where the most famous, famous wines, the Lafitte's, the Margot's, the Petrus, that's, that's where you find the, the really expensive, expensive wines, the first growths and all the, they're hundreds of dollars a bottle, they're very highly collectible. And now the right bank, being the Merlot-based, um, like saint Emilion, that sort of thing, over on the left bank, it's, it's Medoc and Poliac and Margot, those areas. And the right bank, it's kind of the little brother, right? It's Merlot-based, it's not as, uh, expensive, you know, once in a lifetime type bottle stuff, um, but excellent wine. So if they're Merlot based, they're going to be a little softer, say, and maybe not as tannic. And the ones that are from the left bank that are uh, Cabernet based with a little bit of Merlot and a little Petit Verdot, they're going to be uh, a little more complex. They maybe have a little more higher tannins and that's what makes them so great for aging and storing, that sort of thing. Um, this one, Chateau Camplay, is a kosher wine from the right bank. It's 75% Merlot, about 20% Cab, and a little Petit Verdot. Um, it has the little designation right here that it's kosher. And let me give this a pour. Um, I, I do think, yeah, the, the, the wines in Bordeaux can be, can be, I mean, uh, some of those ones from the left bank, I mean, I, 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 you know, they are, there's some of them are once in a lifetime bottles. I had a, um, yes, I will. I will post these recommendations on my website. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> I had a, um, friend of mine that had an amazing, amazing cellar and for my 30th birthday, he served a bottle of Petrus from the year I was born. Talk about a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's something I will never ever forget. I'm forever grateful for that experience. It was amazing. <laughs> I wouldn't want to buy that bottle. <laughs> but here we are with the right bank um, uh, Chateau Camplay. And it's, it is, it has just um, a really nice plummy, uh, it's not too big or overly, overly um, woodsy or anything on the nose. Mmm. Mmm. Not a lot of tannin. Just a nice table wine. Really, um, very, very, yeah, very low tannins on this. Uh, nice Merlot, kind of velvety, very soft, beautiful to go with brisket, something that's been cooking for a very long time. It's gonna have all those nice, rich flavors. This will complement it. That's really, that's really lovely. I brought another bottle. So again, here's the Chateau Champlay. And a lot of the times you'll see for Bordeaux, as I pulled this one out, um, you'll see a Bordeaux that'll have, it'll say saint Emilion. That's on the right bank. So I just wanted to show you this one. So it's um, uh, the, the Bordeaux saint Emilion. If it says Medoc it's, or Poliac, it's on the left bank, which is what? Cabernet based. If it's on the right bank, it's Merlot based. So see, you got a little uh, information in your pocket. You're going to be a little uh, dangerous next time you go on a wine list. And you see that when you get a wine list, right? And they'll say the French wines and they'll break it down. Bordeaux, you'll see Saint Emilion, Poliac. Well, now you need to know which ones are right bank, which ones are left bank, which ones are going to be softer and smoother, and which ones are going to be a little more complex. Right? We're all learning together. I'll share. I'll share all my knowledge with you. Make you a little more dangerous in the wine shop. That's the goal, right? <laughs> um, 
So those are great for your cyber satyrs, and I hope you all have a wonderful time with that. Uh, now we have Easter coming as well, and I look at Easter with the traditional uh, Easter dinner, right? Ham, scalloped potatoes, asparagus, fruit salad, rolls, very, very traditional um, Easter dinner. And I think this is a perfect time to start rosé season. Absolutely fantastic wine to go with, um, with your ham, with the scalloped potato, with the fresh uh, asparagus, the spring asparagus. Now, this one is Chateau Montaud, and I get this all the time. This is a uh, uh, rosé from Provence, from Côte de Provence, and uh, you'll notice the light color, very traditional of, Fra of the, the south of France. Um, it's almost pale. Like, you see the pink in my sweater. This almost has an orangey kind of a hue to it. Uh, you'll notice when you see rosés, and this is kind of a fun thing to do, um, buy a couple of different rosés from different parts of the world, like some of the Italian rosés are very kind of pinky, and the, the ones from the south of France are almost like pinkish orange. Um, there's some in California that are, are also in the middle of that, that pink zone. The darker the rosé, the more berry flavor you're gonna have. And, and it all comes to your personal, your personal taste, what you like. Um, the lighter the rosés when you get to the south of France, like this one, and it has that orangey, pinky, light hue, it's really bone dry, and you just get a wisp of like strawberry. That's, I mean, it's very, very light. These are really, truly just, they disappear on your tongue. They're just refreshing and dry and complimentary of food. Mm. Oh, I love it. Just the perfect little little wisp of strawberry, which I actually brought some strawberries. I love these two together. Um, and this, this one, the Chateau Montaud, is readily available everywhere. You'll find this everywhere. They make 500,000 bottles of this a year, right? So you're gonna find this all over. I didn't talk price points. Um, also what's great about rosés, rosés are really, really reasonable. I, I, you know, you see some of the fancy rosés that are 25, 28, you know, dollars. I think rosé really should be about, this one is about $12 a bottle. Um, you know, there are there other ones, a anywhere between like 11, 12 to 16, 17. You're getting great, great uh, bottles of wine for really reasonable prices. Um, so this one, I know you've seen this. This is everywhere. I love showing wines that when you go into your wine shop, you're gonna say, oh, that's the one that's, uh, we've seen this all over the place. So really, really great price point, right, Amy? Um, I'll go back to our Chateau Camplay. This was about $15 a bottle. Again, the ones on the right bank, the Merlot-based ones, are gonna be much more budget-friendly, really great food-friendly. Have you had this one, Amy? It's, it's really nice, you know? I know everybody loves to, and I've had Seder with you, Amy, <laughs> and everyone loves their Manischewitz, but you can drink some really nice kosher wines at dinner as well. And then the first one that I showed was the Rikanate uh, from Israel, from Galilee. And this one was about $17 a bottle. Um, I really like this. This is just very smooth, very dry. Uh, really, really nice dinner wine. Goes perfect, perfect with your cyber satyrs. And um, again, for your Easter, what a, what a great opportunity to kick off kick off rosé season, right? Uh, we'll be bringing it right through summer. They don't call it porch water for nothing, right? It's just a nice, relaxing, easy bottle of wine, um, a little bit lower in alcohol. Uh, the, these are usually around 12%, 11 and a half. Um, the reds were around 14 and the Chardonnay's about 13, 13.5 13, uh, percentage. And it does make a big difference when you're having a little 11 and a half percent 
a, a bottle of wine that has, you know, the, the um, alcohol. Look, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the alcohol content. When you get into those big, huge Chardonnays that are 14 and a half or some of the big Cabernets that have, you know, 15 or the Zinfandels, that's a, that's a lot of alcohol in a glass of wine. So we like our nice, fresh glasses of wine that you can have while you're preparing your dinner, serving your dinner, enjoy with your family and friends via Skype or Zoom or whatever, however you're doing it. I've been enjoying some cocktail hours with my friends. That has been really, really fun. And uh, we're going to plan one with my family, hopefully this Sunday for Easter. So um, go uh, call your wine shops, place your orders. They, again, they're being wonderful. They'll deliver it right to your car. I got all of these in Fairfield at Moe's, my friends at Moe's. Love you guys. And um, I wish you all a very happy Passover and connecting with your friends and your family. Enjoy some good wines, right? No need to just choke down the Manischewitz anymore. You can have some really nice wines. And uh, also all of these wines are available on wine.com. Uh, if you are online and you want to order things, you know, wine.com is great. They've got everything. Wine Direct is another one. So um, happy Passover, happy Easter. Enjoy being uh, with your friends and family. I've enjoyed being with you. And we'll see you soon. We'll do it next week. We'll think of something you know, more unique, something more springy. I've got some, I've got some tricks up my sleeve. Remember, left bank, right bank. You learned something great today. A little more dangerous in the wine shop. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Mwah, mwah, mwah. See you all soon. <laughs>